What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we're going to be doing the full review on the Hoover Wind Tunnel Air Steerable Bagless Upright Vacuum. Now this particular model is UH-72400, and this is the final machine in Hoover's Air lineup of vacuums. This is the only one that is currently still in production, as the previous cordless, lift, and non-steerable variants have been discontinued. So, was Hoover right to keep this machine on the market? Well, let's find out in my full review of the Hoover Wind Tunnel Air Steerable. Starting off with a basic overview of the machine from top to bottom. So looking at the top of the machine, we do have the handle, which is actually doubling as both the hose and the wand, and it makes a pretty interesting squeaky noise. I found this handle to not be the most comfortable, and overall, it's one of my least favorite aspects of the machine. The way that this handle is balanced makes the machine feel a lot heavier in the hand than it actually is. This machine only weighs 13.8 pounds, but it actually feels heavier in the hand when you're pushing and pulling the machine than other machines that weigh even more as for their base weight, but feel like they weigh less when you're actually vacuuming with them. This includes machines like the Dyson Vault Total Clean, and the Hoover Wind Tunnel T-Series Tempo. So while this machine is lighter weight, even by a few pounds compared to those machines at only 13.8 to 14 pounds, it still feels a little bit heavier when you're actually using the machine, pushing and pulling it forward and backwards. So when you're carrying the machine, it's nice and lightweight for a machine that has all these features. But when you're pushing and pulling it across your carpets and floors, it doesn't feel as lightweight as the base weight would imply. But regardless, here is the top of the handle, which doubles as the wand for the handle for your hose, I should say. And the hose goes all the way down here. If you want to actually connect the hose, you actually connect it into this port right here, which I'll show you later. Right here, we have a button to remove the hose from the wand. So this allows you to, well, remove the hose from the wand, but it's really hard to do with one hand. So that's something I don't like about it. There isn't really an easy way to remove this with one hand. But that is a button that you in fact can use to remove the machine. There we go. So you can remove that pretty easily. Now back here, there's a green button right here. You simply push this to pull the wand out. Right here is your power button. Now on some models this could potentially be green, on this model it's red. And here's your button to turn off the brush roll for both hard floors and carpets. This button actually remembers what mode it was in the last time you use it. So if you have this brush roller off for bare floors and you turn the machine off and on again, you'll have to manually turn the brush roller back on. So just keep that in mind. That can be something that could be missed. Looking down here we have our ports to install the hose. We have our lower hose that goes down to the power foot. We have our rubber coated wheels on the back. Over here on the side, we have our reversible cord wrap, as well as a cord clip right here on the wand, which you will have to remove in order to release the wand. We have our lower cord wrap, which is static. We have our one and only attachment, this combination dusting brush and crevice tool. On the front, we have our bin, which releases with this lock button. You simply twist this right here to unlock the lid and access the filter. I'll show that later. Press this green button to remove the trap or to release the trap door in order to empty it. Your HEPA filter is right here. And on the bottom is the main brush roller, which you use to clean your carpets. It looks like that. You can see it does collect a good amount of hair. I have not cleaned this prior to this review because I wanted to show exactly what it's like after using this for an extended period of time. And we can see the model number sticker and the aforementioned rubber coated wheels. So that's pretty much the main overview of the machine. Using the machine is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to use this to clean carpets or floors, you simply place your foot on the front of the base assembly and pull back. It'll make a very loud snapping sound and that'll let you know that the machine is reclined. So that does not sound the best. It sounds like you're breaking the machine, but that is how you're supposed to do it. Next, if you want to turn it on, you simply press the red button right here and that turns it on. Now in my case, the brush roller is turned on, so it will turn on the brush roll. You do have a swivel neck, which allows you to rotate around certain objects. Now 
Now you can press this green button right here to turn off the breath roll. Press the red button to turn the machine off and push it back up into the upright position until it clicks and locks into place. Now if you want to access your tools, it's a little bit different on this model compared to some other machines. You have to manually insert the hose in order to use it. So if you want to use the hose, just simply press this green button and pull the hose out. Okay, well that's kind of hard to do with one hand. As you can see, I've pulled the machine down. But you simply want to undo these clips, pull this hose out, which as you can see, a bunch of dirt just fell out of it, which is not great. And then you simply take this piece right here with the two and you use this little lever to move this out of the way and push this in place until it clicks. Now the hose is installed and now if you want to put an attachment on the end of this hose or if you want to use the wand, you can simply pull the cord out and remove the wand with that button. Now if you put the wand right on the edge, now you get some extra reach. If you want to use any of the included attachments, which in this case is only one, you can simply put this on the end of the hose or on the end of the wand very simply. Then once you're done with that, you can simply put that right on the edge, grab this hose, pull it off, make sure no debris is in there, put that back in, click the hose into the top, and press the clips into place. Once your machine is full, you're going to want to empty it. Now, my particular dirt has not reached the max fill line yet, but once it does, you want to empty it out. Make sure to empty it out before it starts covering up these holes, because that is where it pulls in air into the unit. So if you cover up these holes, you will lose suction and potentially cause damage to your machine. Press this green button right up here at the top of the cyclone assembly, and press this little green button right here above your trash can to release this lid and allow all the dirt to drop into the trash. Then you can simply close this lid up, and there you go. It says right here to clean the filter about every month, but I actually find that's not super necessary. I generally can go to about three or maybe six months without cleaning the filter, but if we want to actually remove the filter, we just simply turn this lid right here to unlock it, which again is really hard to do with one hand. So we can just set this down real quick. We can just twist this. And you can see now that I twisted it into the unlock position, I can now remove the lid. And then here is our filter. So we just open this up and we can see right here, it has gotten a little bit stained, but once this gets dirty, you just wanna wash it in normal water with any mild detergent that you choose. Let it dry for at least 48 hours. And once it's fully dry, put it back in and reverse this process in order to put the lid back on. Yeah, it's kinda of hard to do with one hand. But just turn it until it clicks into place. Hear that click? Now it's lined up with the lock icon. So now it's back in place and everything is back together. Now whenever this lid is off you can also remove the cyclone assembly and disassemble it with just a few screws. So if you have something stuck in here you can very easily clean this out and that is definitely a feature I really like about this machine. As far as the HEPA filter right here we just simply twist this to unlock it and lift up the cover. Now this HEPA filter you're going to want to replace every so often. Now my particular machine, the HEPA filter has gotten dirty very, very quickly. I believe that to be a defect with my particular machine. Your filter should not get this dirty this quick. I've only used this machine about maybe 10 or 11 times. So you're going to want to replace this filter about every 3 to 6 months. It says right here to tap out the filter, but it that doesn't seem to be very effective at removing dirt. So once this filter gets clogged with carbon dust like this, you're going to want to change it. 
so I recommend changing that filter about every six months. I will link replacement filters for both the post motor filter and the pre motor filter in the description. Now as far as cleaning up the brush roller, this is pretty self explanatory. You do have several screws right here. You have one, two, three, four screws that you can simply take off, take off this base plate and then you can remove the brush roller and get, pull off all of the hair off of the brush. It is pretty simple and you can clean anything that is stuck in the brush like in this case a dryer sheet or any of the hair that is wrapped around the brush now because this brush is very thin i found that hair wraps around this brush roller very easily so if you have a lot of long hair in your house or if you have a lot of pets that shed a lot this might not be the ideal option as you'll have a lot of hair get stuck in this brush roller and you have to clean it out on a fairly regular basis i recommend cleaning this brush roller at least once a month now to talk about the things that I like and dislike about this machine after having used it for the past four months. The first thing that I like about it, in fact there's two things that I like about it, is the fact that it is indeed lightweight, it has rubber coated wheels, and it overall isn't very heavy. Again, 14 pounds, very easy to carry around the house. Now pushing and pulling it, like I mentioned earlier, is a little bit harder than some other vacuums and it does make me not want to use this machine. but. As far as actually carrying it around, it is fine. One other thing that I do like, it does perform rather well for a machine with a very thin brush roll. Its deep cleaning ability is perfectly adequate. Is it the best deep cleaner in Hoover's lineup? No. The Hoover Tempo that I've used does generally clean a lot better, and there are plenty of other machines that I own, including the Dyson, that do clean a lot better than this machine. But for a smaller apartment or a place with lower pile carpets, this is certainly an excellent option as far as cleaning. Now, one other thing that I do like about it is it does have a HEPA filter. Now, it doesn't technically have a sealed system. Hoover says it has their allergen seal system, whatever that means, but I cannot find any information proving whether or not this is a sealed system. So if you have allergies and you need a sealed system, I'm not sure if this would be my first choice because again, I can't necessarily confirm that it's a sealed system. And generally, if you can't find that out very easily, then it's probably not a sealed system because most brands tend to advertise whenever the vacuum is in fact sealed. Now, basically that means that a lot of dust could potentially be leaking out of the machine before it even reaches this HEPA filter, meaning that a lot of the actual exhaust of the machine isn't actually filtered properly. And for a bagless machine, that's not the best because bagless machines already generally don't have as good filtration as bag machines because a lot of the seals and stuff in the bagless design can potentially cause debris to leak out. So that's something to keep in mind. Hi, Boots. So, as far as the things that I don't like about it, well, before we get to that, we'll get into some of the things that are neutral. Now, the hose does actually stretch a good fair amount, and this actually does get a good amount up my stairs when compared to a lot of full-size uprights. It's actually relatively on par. I can get up to, up to 10 steps on my 12-step staircase before the hose is no longer able to stretch any further. This is with the machine at the bottom of the stairs and with the hose attached to this dock. So... You know, you would have to put it at the top of the stairs to get the last two steps, or if you have a landing, then that wouldn't be a problem to begin with. So that's relatively on par with a lot of other machines, and you would think because this machine's a lot smaller than a lot of other full-size uprights that it wouldn't reach as far, but the hose actually does reach a good fair amount. And the wand isn't too bad in length either. I measured the wand at two feet long, and with the handle hose, that's about two and a half feet of reach, not including the attachment. One other thing I do like about the attachment is that, well, the included attachment isn't the best. The crevice tool does its job, and the dusting brush is okay. This dusting brush does like to pop out on very rare occasions whenever you're trying to push it down to the end. A lot of times it'll break right off and you have to push it back on. And it's not the biggest or best dusting brush that I've ever seen. But the nice thing is, this machine uses a standard inch and a quarter fitting, so you can actually use attachments from other brands, including other Hoover attachments. So for example, if you want to get a turbo brush for this machine, you can buy a turbo brush as an add-on for it. Now this is an older one as an example, but if you want to add extra attachments to this machine outside of the ones that are included, that is very, very simple. And that definitely is a good feature. Now my two biggest issues with this are the build quality. And now I said two issues because there's two separate parts of that that I want to address specifically. One is the overall durability of the machine itself. You can tell the whole thing flexes whenever I try to move the handle, 
Now on other machines it's not as big of a deal, but a machine like this that advertises having a swivel neck, it's a little bit more important for this whole thing to feel like it's good quality. And the simple fact that the thing sounds like you're breaking it every time you recline the machine, and the fact that this whole thing just it doesn't inspire any real confidence with the build quality whenever you are trying to utilize the swivel steering. There are other machines that flex whenever you swivel them, like the Dyson, but those machines overall feel like they're put together a lot better than this. This kind of feels cheap, which is not great because there are some aspects of this that actually feel like they're built well. The actual bin assembly feels like it's built well, and the hose feels like it's decent quality too. But the motor is the main thing. My particular unit, for whatever reason, even though it's only been used a handful of times, the motor sounds like it is failing. And it's making a very loud whiny noise, and it sounds like a motor that would be in a cordless stick vac with a dying battery. Which is just not acceptable for an almost $200 machine that yeah, some people may actually invest a good amount of money in and expect to last for a very long time. And given TTIs, which... TTI's Hoover's parent company, given TTI's recent track record with warranty, I am not confident that if you ever have any problems with this machine, that TTI would actually honor the warranty. Because one dirty trick that TTI and a lot of other companies are doing now is they are refusing to allow you to collect on your warranty unless you have the original purchase receipt, which would be fine were not for, were not for the fact that they don't tell you anywhere on the box of this machine or any of their other current machines, at least as of the last time that I checked, nowhere on the packaging does it say that you need to keep your receipt in order to maintain warranty rights. So keep that in mind. If you are going to buy this machine, make sure you hold on to your warranty because the five-year warranty on this, while that is a long time and definitely good for a machine like this, does you no good if you can't collect on it. So considering my particular machine sounds like it has a defective motor, that is definitely something that I am very concerned about. And I don't have confidence that the motor in this thing will last five years because of how bad it sounds out of the box. And I haven't even been using this as often as someone who would be using this as their only vacuum for three or four months. Because yes, I have been using this on and off for the last three or four months, but that's because I have a ton of other vacuum cleaners. Many people, if this is your only vacuum, then this thing would probably sound even worse in this period of time. Now, it's possible I got a defective unit, but I bought mine right off the store shelf. So, there is no reason why it should have this problem. And frankly, it's the responsibility of the manufacturer to make sure that a defective product does not get out into the market, not the consumer. So... I have seen plenty of other versions of this machine with motors that run a lot cooler and a lot quieter. I've talked to other people that have these machines and their motors don't run nearly as hot as mine does because that's the other thing. My motor overheats very badly. It pumps out way too much heat. So if you manage to get a machine with a good motor in it, then I wouldn't be concerned about the build quality and the ability of this machine to last. There are still some problem points mainly just the joint right here where the motor attaches to the power head and this small hose right here which is not removable so if this hose does break then you don't have very much luck there but the good news is that these hoses do appear to be better quality than some other brands so hopefully if you're careful with it you shouldn't have any problems so that's the biggest thing is I don't like it because of how bad the motor in my particular unit sounds and that could be unfair as far as a way to judge the machine, but this is my experience. I bought this machine with my own money, and I'm very disappointed in what I ultimately got. So, overall, if you don't want to take the risk on getting a machine that's as bad as mine is, then I would say shop elsewhere. But, if you manage to find this machine for around the $120, $130 price range, which is as much as I would pay for this machine then it certainly could be better than some of the other units in a similar price range. This would be competing with something like the Shark Navigator Deluxe or the Dirt Devil Razor Pet. It's that similar kind of style of slim upright that's not a lift away but still has a decent length hose. And I do think that this is probably the better choice out of those two units because of the better build quality in certain areas. Now, provided that yours has a good motor in it, unlike mine, then this would definitely be my choice between those three machines in that price range. But, 
if you have one and it and you're worried about getting one with a motor that sounds as bad as mine does and or you can't pay any less than or any wait did i say that right yeah or you or you are shopping at this for two hundred dollars then i would say that's not worth it two hundred dollars is just too much for this machine there's plenty of other machines out there that are better worth your money or even just worth it to just save up an up an extra couple bucks and get something more premium and i think ruby agrees with me in that right do you recommend the hoover well you heard it here first she said no so yeah i mean is this the worst machine that you could buy for 130 dollars not even close but the simple fact that this particular machine has those issues with the motor is why I personally can't recommend it. So if you're willing to take that risk, then I will link the this machine in the description. And the sad truth is, is that there are just a lot of machines in this price range that I've reviewed that I just don't recommend. The Shark, for example, that I reviewed about six months ago also had a similar issue with the motor, and I couldn't recommend that machine for that exact reason, even for it being only $100. And the same story is with this for $130. So... If you can find one of these for 130 bucks with a good motor, then it's a great option if you want a lightweight bagless machine with multi-floor capabilities, rubber coated wheels so they don't scratch your floors, and a decent length hose with a very, a very efficient cyclone. Because the cyclone in this is multi-cyclonic and it does do a lot better dust separation than a lot of other machines, including from companies like Dirt Devil and Shark. So if that's your main concern, then this is definitely a good option. So, sorry if I'm sending a lot of mixed signals here, but it really is kind of hard to get a really good perspective on this machine because it is very polarizing, even to me. There are things I like about it, and there are things I dislike about it. It is not the wholehearted recommendation that, that I can give. Because, for my money, even though machines like the Sanitaire SO4110A do have less features... I'm a lot more confident that those machines will last longer than this, even if they require more maintenance and are a little bit less versatile. So, that's my thing. So anyways, this is Inteltech Studio signing out with my full review of the Hoover Wind Tunnel Air Steerable. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, because my rambling did get a little bit weird during the last half of this video, I'm, I'm sorry about that. My apologies, but if you do have any questions about anything that I may have missed, then definitely drop that in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer those questions. Like I said, I have been using this machine for the past three or four months, so I do know this machine inside and out. So anyways, this is Intel Tech Studio signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace!